Uh, hello, my name is George Kovar, and I'm a community member with the Elastic Community Team. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is a journey through the Elastic Sim. And it's a three-part uh, series that uh, myself, Cami, and Rob have, have put together that will walk you through getting started all the way through the, a journey of threat hunting. And, you know, one thing that we wanted to do is, uh, you know, for this particular presentation, uh, as a virtual meetup style, it's going to be very laid back, informal. So if you have questions, by all means, uh, you know, answer questions in chat, and we'll have some time at the end of this to, to really go through it. But let me go through some uh, introductions here. So, uh, Cami, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Cami Lewis. I'm a community advocate here at Elastic, um, focused on security. I'm based in Colorado, and I've been with Elastic for about 18 months. And then we have Rob. Thanks, Tammy. Hi, I'm Rob Waite. Um, I'm a support engineer with Elastic, and I've also been with Elastic for about 18 months. Yeah, and again, my name is George Kobar. I'm a uh, community advocate for Elastic, and my uh, I'm based here in Colorado. I've been in Elastic for about three years. And uh, yeah, we're both very, all, all three of us are very excited to, to be here and helping uh, kind of get this conversation and get this presentation started. So, um, so yeah, let's go over. Um, just give me one second here. Um, so in today's virtual meetup, we're going to be talking about uh, Elastic Security, specifically SIM. And this is, a, you know, again, a three-part series um, starting on how we can get started all the way through threat hunting. But before we do, I want to talk to the fundamentals behind what Elastic SIM is. The, uh, so the Elastic Stack, or what may some of you have been uh, heard is the Elk Stack. And it's the open source technical, uh, technical foundation that was created by Elastic. And there's four main components within the stack, which are uh, kind of the ingestion layer, which we call Beats and Logstash. And Beats is a lightweight data shipper, and Logstash is a, a pipeline um, processing uh, piece. And that's what provides the ingestion of data into Elasticsearch. And Elasticsearch is a RESTful, uh, a RESTful search engine that acts also as just the analytics engine, but also as the data store. And that's really the search behind the, the entire stack. And Kibana is the virtualization layer, um, or to visualize the data. So any of the data that you've ingested into Elasticsearch, specifically um, documents, um, logs, metrics, security information, and a lot of these different pieces into Elasticsearch, then you can visualize it using dashboards within Kibana. And specifically, uh, we're also using Kibana uh, as a lake to also manage the stack. And on top of this stack, and again, the, the Elk stack or the Elastic stack is open source. So by open source, it's something that you can open and see the code, contribute to it, uh, use it for your own solutions. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, surprisingly how many other people and or companies, organizations are using the open source solution as not only as a part of their own product or, uh, you know, as a, as a solution. But Elastic, what we're also doing here is deploying solutions, specifically enterprise search, uh, Elastic observability, and of course, Elastic security. And these are just some of the use cases that people use the, the Elastic stack for. Specifically, the, the, these solutions, however, are, you know, turnkey solutions that Elastic has developed that will give you the ability to not create this by yourself, you know, or, or with a group, you know, create it from scratch. So a lot of these solutions are turnkey and kind of give you into these use cases a lot faster. And there's a lot of different ways on how you deploy the, this elastic stack. Piece is obviously on bare metal or on containers or using, for example, uh, our open source Kubernetes operator that was just written here in the last year. Those are some uh, options that are available to you. And one of the things uh, that we'll be showing today is our elastic cloud. So it's something where if you want to manage the, the, if you want to have someone else manage the Elastic Stack, you could use our service to do so. Um, so one of the things we'll be talking about specifically with our, our solution is that it's free and it's open. And you know everything that we will be talking about today, with the exception of the Elastic Cloud, our, uh, our SaaS offering is free and open. Um, so that's something I, I want to stress about kind of this presentation. And that's mainly because I'm, I'm lazy and I want to uh, really talk more about the solution, the, this, the free and open SIM, than I do necessarily on, on the, the stack side. Um, one thing that we'll you know, talk about here specifically with the 
uh, the Elastic security, especially the SIM. Uh, Elastic is on a mission to help people and organizations improve upon their security awareness. So there's been a widespread of adoption with Elast uh, the Elastic stack for threat hunting. So this isn't something that Elastic uh, is new at, or is this is a, a new use case. A lot of people have been using this solution for security for a long time. But they've also been using it for threat hunting, uh, fraud detection, security monitoring, uh, monitoring and this is, you know, across many different communities, in, especially in the security community. So the intention of this virtual meetup is really to help spread awareness, make it easier for users to deploy uh, the products uh, for security. You know, it's something that we released back in 2019. And one of the things that we also are, are helping uh, in collaboration is this, what's called Elastic Comma Schema. And really this is a, a, a framework uh, or an, a common naming schema where you can take data from many different data sources and allow it to have it unified uh, for you to be use and consume. So if I'm taking security data, for example, logs and metrics, uh, or if I'm taking data from um, audit information, it's gonna be uniform, uh, unified. So then if I'm looking at dashboards, I don't have a different data modeling for each different data set. You know, it's a common schema that we can use that for. So that's one of the things that, you know, we talk about today is, is we're using all this open source and free. And when I mean free, it is free. And I know that's a loaded term. Yes, you probably still have to pay for the infrastructure, the laptop you're running it on, or the, you know, the bare metal server, the power. Uh, you obviously have to have people maybe that manage it. Uh, but in terms of the software, yes, it's free uh, to use our Elastic Sim. Uh, and the Elastic stack. It's not something that you pay for, or you pay us to use. And that's something that's traditionally not uh, what we see within the security community. And, and Rob is, you know, we'll, we'll talk to Rob in just a few moments about that, but I think that's actually a, a, huge, uh, a huge deal, especially within products that are traditionally closed and paid. Rob did a great job, and this is kind of um, the reason why we're doing this virtual uh, meetup presentations is kind of based off of what Rob wrote in his blogs. So he's written um, several blogs that walk you through on how to do this step-by-step, -step, uh, getting from, you know, getting started, getting it configured, um, all the way into, into threat hunting. Um, so Rob, what I wanted to do, let me go ahead and stop sharing for right now. And what I wanted to do is, is talk to Rob uh, real quick about um, kind of what are your motivations into uh, why writing uh, why did you write the, this blog series on, on, uh, on, our, on our website? Sure. Uh, I think, well, I mean, it's, a, it's a maybe a bit more of a loaded question than that. But um, uh, so I've been in, you know, I've been in, interested in security for a long time. And then a lot of it's like, uh, as my kids grow up, I want to be able to learn what's happening at home, for example. Um, you know, they're, the Internet can be a dangerous place, right, for one thing. Um, but two, I have a, my, like my family has a small business and I have friends with small business anyway. So I think about that and I think about um, how uh, like folks that aren't necessarily technical, how security is, can be really mysterious to them. Um, but I also think about budgets and I think about no one's going to spend $50,000 on a security product for, or at home, three or four computers, right? It just, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense to do it for home. It doesn't make sense to do it for business. And um, prior to coming to Elastic, there was a lot of, you know, like, oh, hey, a lot of people use the Elk stack for, you know, things like logging. And I'm not going to take the time to, to look through thousands of logs on my computer. It just, it, you know, it doesn't make sense. And so when they released, uh, when 7.2 came out, when the beta of Sim came out, um, I started to dig through it. Uh, I actually went through and I put a pie hole on at home. And I found uh, 200,000 DNS requests in 24 hours on my home network, and I was a bit surprised. And uh, I was like, "Oh, okay." And you know, and so kind of the, the, the timing kind of worked out well. Uh, so then I was like, "You know what? I, I want to throw this into Elastic Sim. I kind of want to try this out." And um, I had reached out to the community team, or the, or I guess the marketing team, or whatever, and I said, "Hey, I'm interested in writing a blog about Sim at home," and uh, it was, you know, encouraged to do it. And uh, basically, it's you know, it's interesting to me. It's interesting. You know, hopefully, it's interesting to others. And I, if, if I help a few folks um, figure out how to get it set up, then then I've I've done more than I was hoping to do. So. Yeah, and I think one of the great things, even though maybe a lot of small medium businesses today aren't necessarily thinking about uh, security solutions, given you know the pandemic and maybe trying to keep 
you know, their business running. Um, but this is uh, very important, I think, because, you know, let's say when we return to normal or if it gives people the opportunity to say, hey, I was budgeted for a security product, but now, you know, I, I can't. And they're still interested in implementing this within their own business or even for personal use. Because I think, as you'll see, when we start to demo this, if you just want to have, um, you know, a, a solution to run it, um, we think it's very feasible in terms of the cost to run it in our cloud. Um, but I think giving, providing this, this option for people to use it and consume it, I think is huge. Even for you to, to dive in and, and, and get some more data around or information around what's going on within your own environment. Um, so, so Rob, I know kind of during this, uh, you know, between myself, Cami, and, and Rob, we were all kind of talking about and planning for this. Uh, one thing that, that Rob really brought up that was pretty cool is, is going through this process of, you know, writing the blogs and doing the demonstration, the, the demo, and, and um, as we're going along, I think you found a couple uh, curious things that, were, that was going on with your own environment. Do you, is that something that you can, you can share? Sure. Uh, do you want me to share my screen on this one now, or do you want me to just talk through it and then we'll go through it later? Um, I mean, we could, let, let's, I mean, I should say, let's uh, take a look at the screen if that's okay. And then sure. we gotta... so as, as I went through this, uh, I did find out some interesting things. One of them namely was I have a device at home that was, I don't know if you guys can see this now, but I have a device at home that was actually uh, in partnership with all the DNS requests. Um, it was reaching out to Taiwan to check for updates. I didn't know that's where the vendor was based out of. Um, I, or I didn't realize that's where they pushed their updates from, if you will. They have offices in other places. But anyway, uh, so it's interesting to find out that down in Taiwan, my, this device was, I guess it won't let me zoom in. That's cool. Uh, anyway, zoom won't let me zoom in, but that's fine. Um, anyway, so in Taiwan, uh, you know, so I was able to see this on the map and I was like, oh, okay, that was kind of fascinating. and then. That was the only uh, country in Asia Pacific that was showing up yesterday when I was looking at this. And I was telling uh, Kobar before we started the meetup, uh, my kids have been home from school, of course, and uh, they were looking up some gaming stuff yesterday. And apparently uh, we've got, you know, Korea and Singapore and a few other places on there. So, uh, so that's something I might look up later. Um, but it's nice that I have a, a, a nice view of all my systems. Um, again, I, I would never take the time to look at this, but as I have time to look through it, you know, I, I have a handful of boxes on here, but this is data from my home network and I can aggregate it all at once. Um, I, I will say though, if uh, you mentioned hosting on the cloud, um, the reason I put it in the Elasticsearch service, one was kind of one to be lazy, uh, <laughs> but, but two, um, I have, uh, uh, so like my mom lives out of town and I always get calls on, you know, some random, hey, this and this doesn't work, right? So I could just put beats on her computer and now I when I get that phone call I can just say hang on let me go look and see what events are in here right and so part of it was I wouldn't go through the trouble to set up a VPN for her uh, however you know without that now I can have her just ship it to Elasticsearch service and I can you know kind of troubleshoot her system from there so yeah and it's funny because when when Rob was showing that um, you know, we're kind of planning what, what we're going to demo what we're going to show um, for this virtual meetup or this the first part one it was like, oh yeah, hey, I you know had this device that was calling out to Taiwan, and yeah, and like what you said, Rob is, yeah, we you just didn't know, and and not that it was malicious or anything that you know um, that there was any ill intent there, right? I mean, I, I think you found a setting within your NAS that was calling out. What was it? Every five seconds or for a update? Yeah, it was like a, some default timer was to check, you know, do in it do a DNS request, and then yeah, every five seconds I was looking for updates, which you know, it was, yeah, it was, like I said, it wasn't malicious, but it was something that I looked ahead and looked at the defaults and changed, so. Yeah, and, and that's just some of the visibility that I think is very powerful when you start to visualize some of your data, right? I mean, I know there's a lot of talks around, you know, visualizing data through COVID or visualizing data through logs and metrics. And I mean, there's a lot of different pieces. I, I think just the visualization of that is, you know, I'm sure you could do it manually, right? You can go through, you know, thousands of lines of, of, of logs, right? Who has the time for that? And then to find the, the IP address of that's something that's unique and then doing the who has and then figuring out, oh, okay, that's that company from here. When, when you can actually just take a quick look at a map and see all of that, that data and then start to do some investigations on that. So I think that's really cool. So 
there's, a, the there's a question, George, real quick from the chat that I think is really pertinent to this. Um, so Mike W is asking, what are the requirements for a home spin? So yeah, I so, want to see if we can touch on that real quick. Yeah, so basically what, um, so if you were to run this just exclusively at home, so we're looking kind of for the free open source, um, and you were to run this, let's say on a, um, on an Intel duck, or maybe you have a, like a larger server, you can virtualize, you know, um, this, I would say for a SIM, and this is just kind of a very um, high level, you know, because it really depends on how many devices you're monitoring and so forth. For personal use, I would say probably a, a you know, a four gigs for Elasticsearch, uh, two gigs for Kibana, and then um, and basically, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways on how you can, um, you know, how many cores you should have. They're probably a minimum of, of four cores, I'd say. And, and again, um, it's funny because I think Rob, you know, him and Rob, actually Rob and I both come from support. I know Rob's still supporting a lot of our, our, our Elastic uh, folks. Um, and then I used to, you know, I came from support. So it's, it's I, I can probably tell if I give some numbers right now, it, it could be a little cringy or cringeworthy, just because you could probably run it with a lot less, uh, a lot less CPU and memory. Um, I'm just looking at a, a pretty good baseline to kind of get started and you can scale up or scale down. But you'll see as we go through, um, one of the things that I'm doing locally um, here is I have, a, I'm using a hypervisor. So I have like a, a, a Dell R710, it's showing its age. And I have a couple of virtual machines that I use for this demo. And I'm installing lightweight agents that are collecting that data in, and then sending it into Elasticsearch that happens to be on our SaaS offering. And that's kind of what I'm doing. But to instantiate like uh, Elasticsearch, Kibana, um, would be the, the, and then the Beats, you're probably looking for a minimum type of uh, hardware sizing. I mean, Rob, do you wanna, do you wanna chime in there too? Can you hear me? Sure again. Awesome, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> so we, as far as hardware, uh, I mean, we're, there's not necessarily restrictions. It's just more for what, what works best for perform performance. So from a support perspective, if you're gonna log a lot of data, you'd wanna use an SSD. Um, you wouldn't wanna use a spinning disk, right? So there's, uh, it really depends on your use case. Like for this home and small business, uh, actually I have two more blogs planned. Uh, one's gonna kind of go through more about maps and we'll show, I'll show that in a little bit. And then another was well, gonna be a little bit more about maintenance. So like as a home user, I don't need, I, I don't need more than a couple days actually. Uh, just one, it's cost effective and two, you know, it, it doesn't, it's nothing I wanna really hang on to. So I can really, you know, scale down how much disk usage I have and I could put a small SSD on it if I was hosting it at home. Um, or if in Elasticsearch service, obviously I could, you know, scale it down to just you know, delete the data after seven days or something like that. So it just, it really depends on where you, where you want to go with it. So, and that's the, the beauty of it is we're not necessarily restricted to one thing or another. Um, and, and on that note, from a support side, we do have like tuning guides. If it's tuned for search speed or index speed or disk usage, we have, and that stuff's available out there. So. Yeah. And I mean, we have clusters that are in our SaaS offering that's, um, you know, one gig or two gig in CPU and, and, you know, one or two virtual CPUs. So, so, I mean, again, I, I would just, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, so during this demo, it's a very, um, you know, a quick, you know, 20 minute kind of demo of I'm installing, and then I'll show the actual results of, of me installing all this and then kind of go some, through some, what we have uh, in the, in the on our Elastic Cloud to give you a little better idea of what, what it is. But I think that's the point is, is I think if you do like um, just to, to install and try it out, um, you know, you, you can start small and, and, and always, you know, vertically scale up in terms of CPU and memory if, if you have that ability. So uh, let's see, if, is there, um, is there, let's see, I know Rob, uh, the other question I wanted to ask you uh, was, you know, so you learned a lot, not only just with your own environment and seeing kind of what things, you know, maybe your, your kids are looking at in terms of like, you know, what sites and so forth, just from, from pie hole. Um, but is there, is there something else that you kind of learned during this process that? Uh, well, um, so like some of the order of the blogs, for example, I was going to kind of make the a secure, like blogs two and three are about configuring. Blog two is about 
like setting up uh, a new user for Beats to write data and making a user account for yourself. So you're so basically super user isn't stored in your Beats configurations. Um, and then also that when you sign into the cluster, you're not also signed into super user all the time. So things like it's not the best security practice, but it's a good baseline, right? And that was something where, uh, okay, like I mentioned, my mom having, you know, looking at her system. Well, I gave, give her a user account and she can go look up, you know, she probably won't, but if she, you know, if she asked, I have a role and everything ready to go kind of thing. But the thing is like my kids, well, I'll be proud of them if they get nosy and they figure out this program's running, you know, with some YAML file, right? If they go and find the password, which they could, um, that account has no access to anything. So it's a, you know, again, that's, it's not the best solution. Like I wouldn't, in production, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't run everything as root or admin like we are. Uh, but I, again, that was more just kind of getting us started. And then the other thing was I found going through it was configuring beats um, across five systems and three applications, 15 files, can get really uh, maddening if you make multiple changes. Um, so blog three was really about look at your beats configuration before you deploy them because otherwise you have to go back and update 15 files because you forgot, you know, put your latitude and longitude or something, you'll, you'll find it to be frustrating. So, and I would, I'd recommend like Ansible or something like that to use, but I'm not very familiar with those. So I, I left it out, but. Yeah. And that's something we can always lurk on a little later into the blog series is, is maybe help helping with the automation. Now, now Rob is, uh, we'll, we'll go and grab this link to a lot of the configurations we'll be going over today and especially the blogs will, will, will point to his GitHub. So if you need configuration examples or everything through this, this whole, uh, uh, demo and this, uh, either through the reading through the, the blogs or going through this virtual, um, meetup, then, then that's available there too. So. Um, hey, Cammy, did you have any any questions? I know I've been talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, there, there's one other question about maps. I think we'll cover that during um, the maps portion. Perfect. Okay. We're good. Well, yeah. So what, one little thing I'll I'll do right now, um, and it's funny because you know since everyone's working from home or we're doing virtual learning, uh, my internet uh, can be challenging at times. So what I did was I I did record a video and I'll speak over it just to to kind of go over how how to get started with with this, and we'll kind of go through some basic configurations, and then I'll kind of switch back to live um, and show you the actual um, uh, the actual dashboard of what we what we we, we got. And um, if you have questions during that, uh, that time, definitely answer it and we can always pause the video or, or continue forward. And then kind of once I'm done with this, this, just showing the video and then me personally talking over it, um, Cami will also show kind of, at, you know, what we're hoping to accomplish by the end of this webinar series, you know, by the part three. Um, she'll basically go over a very high level of, hey, now that, you know, you've, you've kind of spent this journey with us, you know, going over, you know, three different virtual meetups, you know, this is hopefully what we'll be able to accomplish and then you'll be able to use. So for the more senior or veteran um, security folks, they'll, they'll be able to help, you know, see, okay, these are, you know, this is something that's, uh, that I could use and, and something that'll be functional. So let me go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here. Let me just grab this uh, video here real quick. And hey, one thing to mention, the, if you haven't gone through this, uh, the blogs are designed where one is just kind of getting the, the deployment created in Elasticsearch service. And again, you can make it, you can make the cluster, you can set up at home, you just change the outputs. Um, two and three, again, two is more of a get set up. So, you know, some security baselines. And then three was getting your GOIP set up and your Beats configs. And then four, five, and six are individual getting Beats installed on your different systems. And then seven was kind of the, hey, we've gone through all this work and here's kind of what we have. So if you haven't gone through the blogs and you have questions, just let us know. Yeah, and we'll, uh, one of the things on, on that, um, you know, we'll, we'll go through the uh, kind of like the, the recorded demo here. And uh, if any questions, Kami or Rob, if you want to interrupt or so forth, I'll be kind of talking to the video as, as it's going through. But yeah, let me know. We can always stop it. And, and, and one thing, it's funny because <laughs> I, when I did this, in, uh, when I, the purpose of this particular demo was really focused on how to get up kind of quickly going as quickly as possible just so you can start evaluating this. So you'll, you'll start to laugh right away when you start to see, hey, I'm installing this as root. It's like, come on, you know, and I, I totally understand that I get that. So if everyone wants to put like grief in the chat for that, I totally understand. But one of the things is I just want to show more about getting started and then we'll actually use the second blog series to, to you know, do security hardening and then go through and, and enrich the data even more and, and kind of continue that process. So. Yeah, so it's it's demo time. Can everyone see the screen? We Thumbs can up. see it, George. 
Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to rewind this to teeny a bit. Thank you for that. So yeah, it's demo time. So one of the things that uh, we're going to help uh, accomplish today is um, I, I have these two virtual machines um, that happens to be on my Dell R710 and they have a lot of different uh, beats that are installed with it. And the purpose of this, if there's some type of issue or something that's being recognized um, through the beats, it'll be sent over to Elastic. You know, all this data will be sent to Elasticsearch and then Kibana and then um, that we'll be able to visualize that data. I'm going to rewind for just a second. So we'll be able to visualize that data. And then of course, uh, through some of the machine learning or um, automated methods to, to, to do this, there's also kind of some alerting that we're gonna be building in a little later on. But the, the, the purpose of this is, is really to start getting, um, you know, audit information, um, log messages, um, uh, you know, a network packet information, all this data into Elasticsearch, and then be able to visualize that. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a, a cloud instance. And the reason why I'm creating a cloud instance is, is because I'm just doing a shortcut to, to stand up the, the Elastic stack. So for example, the um, Kibana and Elasticsearch. And that's one of those things that, that's, that's obviously not, not uh, free, but it's just something that we're using as a shortcut to kind of get started. So we do a 14 day free trial and it's at that link. And it's something that, um, you know, if you want to copy that down, great. Um, of course, I'm like missing it. Um, right there. If you want to copy that that link down, if not, you can just go to uh, uh, cloud.elastic.co um, and it'll actually have a, would you like to try that out? So anyway, so basically it'll send you an email and the email will be um, to start the free trial uh, or do an acknowledgement, you know, verify and accept. And once, uh, once you do that, it's going to prompt you to go and set up a, a password. And, um, you know, this password for me, you know, I'm going to go ahead and and do it, um, you know, uh, a little more complex, and hopefully I remember it later. And again, there's a it's a 14 day trial, so it's something that doesn't require a credit card or anything. Something you can. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select to to start the free trial here. And then one of the things I'm gonna call this is Sim. Now our Elastic Cloud. Um, again, this is not really the focus, but it's something you can either deploy on Amazon, Google, or Azure. And I'm just, uh, since I'm based in Denver, I'm gonna select Oregon, so that's the closest to me. And then uh, the latest right now is uh, 7.6.2. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, customize my deployment. And one of the things, if you do the trial, you won't be able to see too many different options in terms of, um, you can be able to move up or move down how much memory you have in the cluster. That's just because we wanna give you, uh, you know, a trial version and, and keep our, our costs associated with that. But here, this is kind of my, my environment, so that's why I'm going through. You can obviously adjust how many zones you have, how much memory is allocated to Elastic. Um, right now, I have like a, a gig to Kibana. We have also what's called machine learning. Um, that's also part of this, that's included. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create deployment. Now, once the deployment's been created, you'll see where you can, uh, the username is just Elastic, and this is the password. So what you can do is you can just hit copy, um, that password or download, because that's what we're going to be using um, in a lot of our Beats configuration. We'll need to set a URL of the Elastic instance and also the password. Um, and I just downloaded it just because um, I had a, a copy of that here locally to, to the machine here. And if you're wondering, yes, I already changed the password. So um, <laughs> at least I'm that security conscious today. So I went ahead and um, download that or copy that. And I think once we're ready here, um, we're gonna go ahead and launch Kibana. And of course, a part of this, well now I'm copying it. Once we launch Kibana, it's gonna ask us for that username or password. And for whatever reason, if I forget about this, you could easily go um, on the uh, left-hand side and you'll see where there's a security side. And you'll be able to, uh, uh, to reset the password. So, you know, if for whatever reason you forgot to do it, that's no problem, you can copy that. And I'm just resetting it here just to kind of give you an example. Um, but if we come back to Kibana, we'll go ahead and hit launch here. And um, we'll go ahead and log in with Elastic. And then that password that I just copied, I'll go ahead and paste. And one of the first things that you'll be presented with is, hey, would you like to use some of uh, the data that's already present? Or would you like to add your own? Like if you want to try the sample data. Obviously, we're going to explore our own because we're going to be ingesting data into Elasticsearch. And then from here is a good page or launch page of how we can start adding data. So I went to the SIM part. I want to start adding um, a SIM. And this is just great information about what, what uh, 
integrations that we currently have. So one thing we'll do is we'll start, um, because I'm RDP'd, this video is just for an RDP session into this uh, Windows 10 machine, just on evaluation. Um, but what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna, I can start to install uh, WinLogB. Um, and before I do the installation here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually um, going to create what's called the uh, Geo, uh, Geo IP um, pipeline. Um, so when we configure this ingest pipeline, um, a lot of the data that you saw within Rob's environment was specifically um, putting some longitude and latitude. Um, the, it, what we're doing is we're creating this ingestion pipeline to, to get information here of uh, want to be able, when we're ingesting, we want to, uh, you know, recognize the field of the client IP of, um, you know, the source and destination and the server IP address and the host IP address. These are all different fields that we all, that additionally we want to add into our Elasticsearch uh, cluster. And these are one of the things that, um, that you can do, and it's within the blog and or um, within that example. So you can go into which is called uh, DevTools, which is kind of a programmatically uh, a way that you can um, edit the Elasticsearch without sending, let's say, Postman API curls. You can go directly into this Kibana, which is called DevTools, and then we'll be pasting this description or pasting this right here. And that's that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going over on the left-hand side, and I'm pressing enter a couple times, and then I'm pasting um, the. Uh, actually, I have this uh, already pre-copied on um, Sublime Text. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this uh, GOIP um, pipeline and I'm gonna go ahead and be pasting it uh, here and then we'll go ahead and be running it. And it will provide a little more details uh, within the virtual or the second virtual meetup about enriching this data or why we're doing this. But we see that, that we gotta acknowledge it's true here. And regarding the question with maps, so if you're self-hosting, um, you can actually build your own database with MaxMind and they have their own blog about it. Um, so if you're self-hosting and you want to, you know, kind of customize where your locations are, you can definitely do that either with Elasticsearch or Logstash. And then the other thing was in the, so in blog three is where you add this in just pipeline, but then in each beat, you have to tell a lot, tell the beat to use that Elasticsearch in just pipeline in the configuration. Um, and so that's critical. And then there's another part, make sure you're on 7.6 or newer because there was a fix for um, IPs in an array that, that will let that work together. So uh, hopefully all those are in the blog, but again, with that information, that's what lets you, that's what lets you see this information on the map. Yeah, perfect, thanks. So now that I've, uh, I've added that um, uh, additional piece there, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing these lightweight agents, which are, are, are called beats. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, a, um, add these events. And then one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna law, um, install um, Windows Event Log. And if I select into that, um, what the nice thing about this is it gives us step-by-step -step instructions on how to install this. So for example, I'm gonna come over here to hit the download page and this gives me um, you know, a, a, a zip file that I'm gonna do. Um, I think you can also do an MSI and that's a part of beta. So that's something that um, you also do. But I just um, downloaded it. And um, what now I'm gonna do is uh, in the instructions, it tells me to uh, rename um, that file. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over um, back to my downloads and I'm gonna rename it just to WinLogBeat. And that makes it a little easier because when I'm going through PowerShell, then I'm not trying to enter in the entire um, string of, of the version. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract that out. And then, yeah, then I'm gonna go ahead and rename this here. And it, what's nice is, you know, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of wiggle room in terms of in, installing this. And I mean, I, there's a lot of different methods on how to do this uh, from an automated standpoint. But I really want to show from uh, getting started on how to kind of go through this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up PowerShell, uh, run as administrator. So we have the access. And again, one of the security things, you know, I'm going to set the execution policy to be unrestricted, just so that we can kind of go through and install this. Uh, again. <laughs> Don't judge. Uh, this is just kind of a, a brief, you know, getting started. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do here is we're going to set the execution policy just so we can allow that. Now, one thing I think in the blog series, Rob, you you also mentioned specifically. I think it's in blog three. Uh, you can set the the policy uh, to was it restricted? Or? It should be remote signed. 
um, should allow yeah should allow you to because the code is signed um, but I know some folks will go straight to unrestricted but yeah and hopefully I think um, the text is coming up pretty clearly you know um, I, I really didn't really investigate too much in increasing the font size in the PowerShell so I'll kind of talk about it but what I'm doing is I'm I'm, I'm saying to allow run and then I'm now um, changing directories into that uh, program files. That's where I exported that to. And then uh, what I'm doing now is I'm installing that, that script to install it. And it says, hey, would you like to run once? And I say, yes. So we're installing this WinLogB here. And what's great about this is um, if you kind of notice down below when it says the edit the configuration, um, as soon as I go back to the um, to the Kibana piece, um, you'll see that hey, this is where I could provide you the cloud ID. This is the my cloud instance right now, and also the cloud auth. So it's giving you the elastic and then you know the password. But what I'm going to do is I need to configure my um, WinLog beat the YAML file to be able to to connect into the cloud instance that that we just created. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, this YAML file uh, within subline or subline. One thing's, or whatever text there you want. Um, one thing that I, you can also do, there's a reference.yaml file. And the, the reference will tell you all, you know, a lot of other different configurations you can do there. So I, that's something you can, you know, take a look and get a, uh, a more idea of, of what's available. Now what I've done is I've just, I've copied the cloud ID and the cloud auth, and I'm just gonna copy the password. That's that same password I grabbed from when the cluster was created. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, enter that, that password. And um, very briefly, I'm not gonna go through all the configuration options within the YAML file. Um, just because obviously we wanna uh, be able to, to kind of enrich the data later on. One of the things though, you'll see here, we have, you know, we're picking up event logs. Um, and one thing to call out is um, I have a system, a sysmon or sys uh, internals that's aren't installed. So I did a pre-install of that on Windows. And in the blog that Rob wrote, he kind of walks about that. I think it's on the third one or fourth one um, about how to install that. Because you'll notice here, I go back just a teeny bit, um, that it's, it's using that uh, sysmon internals um, part of that. That's to grab some of that data. And that's just for the WinLog beat specifically. But you notice here, we have some basic Elasticsearch settings. I mean, really anything else, uh, we're going to keep the default. The only thing that we're going to add is, or to reach the data, is some of that geo IP information. Um, so down over here, you'll, you'll, we'll eventually get to a place where it says processors. And the processors is where we can add, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, host metadata into it. So one of the things that I did is I, uh, I went to a website, I looked up my longitude, latitude based on my, my uh, address, my house address. And then what I did is I kind of filled in the location by you know, uh, latitude and longitude, uh, the address, um, the region name. Uh, so it's, I live in Colorado. My ex city is, is in Arvada. Um, and this isn't really my house, it's pretty close to it. So. Um, but anyway, this is uh, additional information that we're enriching um, and providing that data into Elasticsearch. So now we're, what we're basically doing is we're adding fields to say, this is the, my geolocation, this is the longitude latitude for what we're calling home or home base or where this is installed at. So we're, we're enriching some of this data here. And this is some of the configuration that we're going to add um, to the WinLogB configuration um, to, to, to give some more, some more, uh, more information on it. And of course, uh, so, and hey, on that note, um, so if you travel, I would recommend you defining your home subnets um, and you can do separate, you can do extra entries for the add fields. And, um, and that way you could define your local private subnet as that location. And then if you're at a, you know, if you travel and you're on a different private subnet, it won't write that you're at home when you're not at home. And, and, it, and it, it's all tunable to whatever, however you want to set it up, so. Yeah, that's great. And then just make sure the formatting's correct. I think when I, paste it from that file, it, it moves the net info over. So I just kind of went ahead and created that. And once I'm good there, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And there's, again, you know, there's logging information. Um, if you wanna have it, you know, this being monitored by other solutions, that's something else that 
that could be done here. You know, I'm, I'm really not going too much into detail of like all the options. Um, the next part, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail. As soon as we have some data moving into Elastic uh, and then stuff for us to visualize, then we'll start to, to build based off of that. Oh, and the one thing that I didn't add, and actually I think I'm going back to doing, is um, tags. So one of the things you could do, and it's under the general section, is you can start to name these different um, systems that are coming from. So we can identify it quickly from Elastic or Elasticsearch. Um, so for example, this tag, we're calling it name. You know, since this name is a Windows system, it's the only Windows system that I have within this demo. So I'm just gonna call it, I think it's Windows and then capital system. And then the, the one thing that you could start also doing is adding um, additional fields like, um, you know, or the tags, like is this, let's say this was in production within your, your organization. Maybe you wanna add uh, this one log beat to say, this is our web tier, or this is our back end, or this is, you know, this type of service. Then you can start adding like, for example, a tag. I'm calling this VM1. And, you know, notice it gives you an example. This could be, you know, you can give it multiple tags as a part of like data center, whatever, you know, um, and service, you know, whatever, in quotes. So you can start adding additional tags to that. So when you start looking and visualize the state in, in Kibana, you can look for tags to do that, to help you out. Now, one of the things too, um, we might also want to name this as environment. And this is all really arbitrary. You can really name it whatever you want, but ENV environment, um, this is, you know, uh, lay, lay, uh, listed as staging. I'm just gonna say this is for home. This is, you know, kind of what environment I'm looking at. And it's funny, um, I didn't edit out any mistakes because, you know, what's the fun with everything going right? So you'll see in just a second here, um, I have to uncomment the fields. So I, I go and I start, I, I, I attempt to do a startup here or set up uh, when log being and it, it errors out. Maybe I should, uh, uh, maybe I should have uh, spoiled it. I said spoil alerts. But what I'm doing here when I set up the win log beat um, and setup is uh, what I'm going through the setup configuration. And one of the options is to upload the uh, dashboard. So as a part of every beat, there's some preloaded dashboards that are automatically loaded to Kibana, which really helps out um, significantly when you're um, starting to, to visualize that. So yeah, I got an error message in line 62 that something's going wrong and up there it is 62. I just need a comment out. Uh, fields that's under part of that and then I'll save that and we'll see if it works. Okay and yep and it's set up and you'll see that it's um, something that's called ILM um, which is index lifecycle management and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on the on the series too. And I'm gonna go ahead and start WinLogBeat and once I've started it um, I can come back to the configuration page and uh, I can do check data. Is data actually arriving into Kibana, which is actually gives you that final verification that did I do everything correctly, this four-step process. Now, what I did is I just showed over um, uh, Windows. What I wanted to show just quickly was uh, another, um, another beat that's over CentOS. And this process will be a lot quicker just because I don't have to go and edit files and and you know, export and so forth. I'm just gonna pull it directly down. So what I'm doing is I'm just logging in um, to my, uh, uh, my cent I'm using CentOS 8. And it, again, it's, it's another virtual machine. And what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm logging, logging as root. Again, you can berate me on chat if you want. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna go through um, that same process, but I did instead of going through Windows, I'm gonna go through Linux. And of course, you know, you'll find that if we go through here, you can do Mac OS, Debian, so you know, Ubuntu, RPM, so Red Hat as well. Um, what I did is I literally just hit copy that snippet and now I'm bringing that down through curl and then I'm gonna use uh, the RPM to install the, the audit B package. And then now I'm going over and I'm copying that snippet and that's gonna be the cloud ID. And then the Elastic username, I just gotta take that password and pot, uh, paste it here, so. Um, not necessarily a conversation for this meetup, but I'm using Vi instead of Emacs. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. And uh, very similar to what we were doing within the Sublime text editor, what I'm doing is I'm just um, copying and pasting um, that cloud ID information. 
And then I'm gonna go back to that copy password I have that I've already changed, so don't try it. And I'm going to and, and remove out that password and put in the, the actual password. And again, one of the things that we'll wanna do is, this is for audit information into uh, the machine. So if there is any, uh, you know, what I did is I asked uh, a couple of uh, friends and, and colleagues if they could, you know, uh, try to, to get into this machine or log in. So obviously this is um, recording um, audit information on CentOS. And what I'm doing right here is I'm actually going back to enriching this data again with some more geo IP information. So I'm copying that same information, my longitude, latitude, my location, and I'm adding it to the, um, the host metadata field. So I'm adding that here. And kind of on that, um, so in the, in the blogs with, with blog three, we set up the beats common configurations and it's basically the, like the general settings, the host name and the, any tags at the top level, um, any, uh, the top level processors like the GOIP information, your output to Elastic Cloud, or, or you know, if you're running it at home, Elasticsearch or even Logstash, um, and then any logging settings or uh, monitoring or whatever. Anyway, all of those settings carry across um, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So they're agnostic to any operating system. And then what I did is in, in, in GitHub, there's a Beats common config YAML, and you basically drop that at the bottom or top of the specific applications configuration file. Um, and in the blogs that I basically put the full configuration file for each application on, in, in the blog um, as well. But if you wanna make your own, I, I recommend making a common one that you agree upon for each system. And then that way you can drop it into each application's uh, config file as you go through with the installation. It, it will just save you some heartburn. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and update them again and again. Yeah. And here, what we did was just took a, a snippet uh, of, you know, we're do, running this setup. That's a nice little check that everything is okay within the YAML file. And then what it's doing is it's actually downloading, um, I'm gonna pause this for a second. It's downloading um, the, or uploading the dashboards that are, are kind of pre-made with audit beat and it's sending it up to, to Kibana. So when we launch Kibana, we'll see some of those dashboards that are pre-made, which is kind of half of the, half of the work too, getting the data into Elasticsearch, Making sure that you got that data set up, and then and then um, and then ensuring that it's coming through, and then uh, and then visualizing that data, which we kind of see the power of that. So, and again, you know, one of the things I did within CentOS is, um, you know, see that in just a second here. This is just kind of a, a quick list of the things that we're showing within cloud of all of the different integrations that we have, and it's not just limited to this. Uh, I know uh, 7.7 is on the horizon here, and there, um, the the Tanya, she's the the uh, product manager, is mentioning how many. I mean, there's hundreds of different integrations that are out there, and this is just kind of some of the common ones that we threw up on our Kibana on our, um, you know, so you can easily quickly get going. But there's a lot of custom um, endpoints that you can create. There's a lot of different modules for, uh, you know, ASA, Cisco, Juniper, you know, to name some vendors, right? Um, but there's a lot of different of these configurations or integration points that you can utilize. So, and again, you know, this is something that I installed uh, system metrics and so forth. Um, so one thing that I wanna do, you know, cause I, I know we're running a little over on time, um, the, the process for installing um, the other beats within CentOS is, is very similar, we showed. Um, there might be some other pieces specifically for, um, uh, Windows, um, like, like for example, there's a module or a beat called uh, Packet Beat. It's something you have to install when PCAP or uh, what was the what was the Rob? I know you installed it's NPCAP. Uh, yeah, NPCAP. when I think when PCAP has some vulnerabilities and is deprecated, so NPCAP is uh, it was in that blog. But yeah, that's the one that I use on Windows. Yeah, and, and you and that's something that you can add that, but that's that's included within the blog to kind of walk you through that. So I didn't want to go through every single beat and what I installed here, but this kind of gives you a snapshot of, of what what I did, right? So we have our CentOS machine and our Windows machine, and Windows we installed WinLog beat, Packet beat, Audit beat, and Metric beat to gather all this data and send it into our Elasticsearch uh, Elasticsearch host that happens to be residing in Elastic Cloud. So if this could be self-hosted, this is something you could run as a, a Docker container or on bare metal or on a virtual machine, you know, entirely up to you. I, we just use that just to kind of shortcut um, to get the cluster up and going. And then on CentOS machine, what we do is we installed um, a file beat, 
uh, packet B, auto B, and metric B. And those are just some of those, those pieces there um, for that. And one other thing, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to show you the actual, uh, I'm going to actually show you the environment um, that we're using uh, that I installed everything on. And we'll take a quick, just a quick look at the uh, SIM, uh, the SIM UI. And then we'll have Tammy, or excuse me, Cammy, <laughs> Cammy will show us the, uh, you know, kind of more of the advanced view. Do you want me to show the, the other map that we had talked about earlier, the one that will be in blog eight? Do you want me to show that one here quick before you hop on that or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So someone had asked about um, other uses. So ba basically the part of it was before seven, so in seven two, we didn't have any integration with maps. Um, so I had built a overlay so I could look at the maps data in Elastic Maps, not, not in the SIM app. And again, this before the SIM app had this. Um, and you can add, like you could do the pew pew maps, but there's a lot more, I think there's scripted fields behind it. So it's a lot, but it's a lot more work. Um, but I basically could still get the point to uh, the source and destination references here. And uh, Zoom isn't letting me, oh, it is letting me, um, good. Uh, but then again, I can get a, a kind of a better picture of where, you know, traffic is going on in my environment. Um, and then I have access obviously to, to the layers either states and counties and, and you know just the other things and you can add your own if you know if you do business if you're a business and you do business with a certain company and you know where they're putting you could set that in there right I mean it's really customizable here so um, but in case anyone's interested once you have that data in the last in the elastic search you obviously can do a lot more with it so that will be I'll cover that a little bit more in blog eight whenever we get around to it but with uh, with everything happening COVID and all that I it just hasn't been uh, on my priority list Yep. Yeah, completely understand. And so this is what I'm doing is I'm sharing this RDP. This is that Windows VM that I was installing the WinLogV. And this is kind of that, that screen here. Um, but if we come back over, I'm going to go ahead and um, go over to our SIM um, dashboard. And this is all live. So we're <laughs> playing with fire as always. Um, so while this loads, uh, here we go. I mean, I was going to say I was going to drop my video just for a little more bandwidth, but so obviously, you know, one, one of the things that we'll find is, you know, we'll have some kind of holes and in, in different areas where we're not seeing data. And that's, that's just because we're not completely, you know, building that out. So we really haven't built in um, the signal count or the alerting counting for as part of the, the definitions. So that's something that we haven't really gone, uh, gone over. And I'm going to move this maybe. Um, and what we're doing is we're showing the last 24 hours of data. If we want to show it since I stood at the environment, we can expand that out. But we can kind of take it, start to look at some different event counts or event data that's coming up. So, you know, we have audit beat, which is coming from our CentOS machine. We can kind of see some different events that are coming up, um, you know, file beat also and win log beat. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show that, um, you know, if we come over to hosts, for example, it should list out uh, our Windows machine and our CentOS machine. And it's funny because, uh, yeah, we can see nine failures. And what some of those failures uh, of are unsuccessful uh, logins um, is what I did is I put a, on my environment, <clears throat> I did a, uh, a, a virtual port forwarding and a NAT. And I asked some people within Elastic to say, hey, can you try to log in and, you know, uh, through root or through the, uh, through this RDP session and see if we can try to get, you know, some useful data out of that. Like, hey, you know, where are this data, you know, uh, who's trying to log in and where are they coming from? You know, just to kind of give you some, some data. No, uh, no good demos ever uh, when something's going right. It's when something's going wrong. So you can kind of see where this is this failure of nine failures at and some information there. But if, if I come over to my networking, um, you know, one of the things that you'll see in, within my map, the differences between um, Rob's is Rob has, has enriched the data a little bit more through his, his, his blog series. So when we do part two, this is something we'll, we'll continue to add on to get more data here. But you can see here, um, and kind of on that, so uh, if anyone's guessed, I do not live in New York, um, but since, since you can define your own private addresses, you can define where they are. So um, anyway, just to throw that out there. Yeah, so you can see where, you know, we had some folks that were in um, France and Germany and Australia and um, that all attempted to try to log into my environments. And it's funny because we have one of our advocate managers uh, in Australia. We have a couple advocates in France and Germany, and of course, you know, all across the you know the United States um, that are are that was trying to log in and, and make some events. So, you know, there's 
with the information that I did today, I installed these WinLog beats. I went through the YAML file, either through like a text editor or through Vi on a Synos machine. And I added all the additional information in. It's something you can easily replace the, um, the longitude, latitude, and your information um, and get some of this data into it. There was one little configuration that I did, and that was, which I'll show you in just a second, that, that made all of this, this network map possible. And again, it's just, you know, I, I wanna make sure I'm cognizant of time. No one wants to, to you know, go over an hour and a half video or YouTube video. Um, so a lot of this will actually go into in the second part, a little bit more into details of, you know, what's inside the SIM app? What are some things that you can do? How can we wrench this data? How can we make it useful for not only as you uh, being personal as a personal solution, but also maybe for like an SMB solution. And again, this isn't just for SMB or personal. Obviously there are very large organizations that have used Elastic and the SIM and Endgame as a part of a, uh, an enterprise solution. This is just the purpose of this virtual meetup is, is just to show you know, this free and open SIM, um, the first of, from, from Elastic, and the first of its kind to be completely free and open. Um, we, you know, what can you do with it? So, but that's just the, the high level here. I, I do wanna share one thing here real quick. And let me see here. So um, you'll notice here that um, the only thing that I added to is the output.elasticsearch.pipeline and then geo, uh, geo IP info. That's the only thing that I had to add to get to that different additional information here. So I'll go ahead and add that. Um, and then of course, that password is also another old password. So um, don't worry about that. Cami, do you wanna show just very briefly on the, the end piece of kind of just you know five minutes or so? Yeah, I can do that. And just in the interest of time, I'll go really quick. Um, we're pretty over. Yeah, and, and Cami, if and, or um, excuse me, if if uh, anyone in the chat has any questions or anything that maybe you want us to cover for next time, um, what we'll do is we'll stop the recording and then we'll kind of open it up to anyone that wants to talk or any questions or anything or maybe hey, I would love to see this in another virtual meetup for on the security topic, and then then we can you know talk about that and yeah. So anyway, sorry, Cami. No worries. Yeah, so I'm going to do a much more detailed demo um, in the, the next parts of the series, but I just wanted to just briefly show another environment where we have quite a lot of data coming in. This is what you would see if you stood this up for your smaller, medium sized business, most likely. Um, and again, it, it's just it's a more interesting view just to see see what's going on when you start really getting a lot of data in here. So this is your overview page. Um, new in 7.6 is detections and signals. Um, so you can see your signal count here. Signals are just events that are created by detection rules when they trigger. Um, so I'll go into this in a lot more detail later as well. Um, and, and George sort of showed these views already, but you have the host network detections timelines New in 7.6 is a cases view as well, not shown here, but we'll show that in another part of this series. Um, one more feature I just wanna show here on the left, the security news feed. This is, this is a nice new feature as well, where you can set up your analysts with news that they'll need to see without having to leave the SIM to go search for the, the latest current events. Uh, George already showed you the host view and the network view, but I'll just show you, you know, what does this look like when you have 76,000 failures, for example, and, you know, several hosts to look at. Network as well gets a lot more interesting when you have a lot more data coming into your map. This takes just a second to load. But now you can see, you know, we have hundreds of sources and destinations we can start digging into here. Um, again, there's, there's a ton of data down here and different features that I'm gonna go into in detail, types of network data, anomalies, which is machine learning. I'm gonna go into that in more detail as well. Um, and the timeline, which is really, in my opinion, one of the the best features for a security analyst. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show that as part of a security investigation. How you would 
start investigating, uh, which is really beginner threat hunting, but you know, you would just pop, over, pop open the timeline here. You can start dragging and dropping data into the timeline directly. And it's gonna start rendering data for you, which is really one of my favorite features of the sim. So that's just a really quick high level overview. But again, I'm gonna go into a lot, de a lot more detail in other parts of the series. And George, do we want to go into any Q&A real quick? Yeah, so I think what we'll do is, well, so first I want to say thank you for uh, everyone that spent the time out of their day to come out and, and listen to you know, experts like Rob and Kami kind of go through this process and listening to me say all the ums and buts and uh, thank you for your time out of this. And again, we, we, we want to have, you know, two other uh, series, of, uh, virtual meetup series that will go deeper into what we built today. And then later, uh, and then the third part series is really go into more of a, um, a threat, you know, you know, understanding the threat analysis and what you can do within the sim. Again, thanks for coming. And I wanted to include uh, how to get some help. Obviously, we have our discuss forum, which is a great way to uh, get your answers questions. When we can all meet together, community meetups is also a great opportunity to uh, meet different people that are in your area and how you can share use cases. Of course, uh, during this period of the pandemic, uh, you can go visit our uh, training. We're offering some free training online. Um, so visit our training site. And of course, we have a Slack channel at elasticstack.slack.com if you have any questions. Thanks, and hopefully you enjoy the presentation.